शांतिशाशाति हरि ओ स्थपकाय चर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे स्थपकाय चर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा ते नम असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मृतंगमय शांति 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 लेट अस ऑफर अवर सल्यूटेशन टू श्री रामकृष्ण द एम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिजन्स द सुप्रीम गॉड इनकारनेट हु केम टू एस्टैब्लिश यूनिवर्सल रिलीजन लेट अस प्रे टू हिम टू लीड अस फ्रॉम the unreal to the real to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge to lead us from death to immortality we have been studying gospel of shri ramakrishna in the last class i was speaking on the topic god can be seen i am continuing the same topic in this class also in the last class we touched upon three most important factors by which we can really see god one is single minded devotion what is called avyabicharani bhakti bhakti means love love of god unadulterated love of god and that is called single minded devotion and lord krishna out of his infinite compassion showed his cosmic form to arjun who was the best friend second point we touched upon the last class brahman cannot brahman cannot be described fully it can only be experienced third point is the significance of gita which means tyaga renunciation one should renounce everything without any hesitation and seek god alone one has to shake off all attachment from his mind so when these three factors are practiced wholeheartedly one can see god in today's class also i am continuing the same topic 
Sri Ramakrishna has said, as long as the ego persists, as long as I am aware of all my my importance, you can't see God. It has to go. No place for egoism in spiritual life. Whether materialistic ego or spiritual ego. Spiritual ego is worse than the materialistic ego. God can call God can tolerate anything but ego. So now Sri Ramakrishna says. It's not so easy to get rid of ego, though we may love to get out of that egoism. Then Sri Ramakrishna gives a very easy solution. Well, master servant attitude. Sri Ramakrishna advocates this as very practical way of getting rid of ego. The Supreme God is full of infinite auspicious qualities. Nirakura, Nirakara Nirguna Brahman is without any attributes. But we are talking about Sakara, Sagun, Brahman. Nirakara, Brahman, nobody can comprehend. So in order to facilitate the bliss of the Divine, the formless aspect assumes Divine form. And is full of auspicious qualities. And we should know that there is no difference between God and His attributes. To give an example, it is not possible to differentiate the flame from its light. It is not possible to differentiate sugar from its sweetness. God is but a mine of gold, golden qualities, good qualities. So the Divine Supreme is ideal for all individual souls. Casting off our inert conditioning body and shining in the intrinsically virtuous self itself is our sole aim. This fruition itself is salvation, realizing one's own true self, that is Atman. If we become a devotee of God and become his servant, it is as good as becoming a servant of His infinitely auspicious qualities. If we surrender ourselves to infinite goodness, where is the room for the degradation of our personality? There is a greater self-respect in becoming a servant of noble ideals and leading a disciplined life than in being a slave of selfishness avarice and lust and leading a life of wanton willfulness and ruining oneself. Does owing allegiance to the constitution of one's country and being bound by its laws and regulations ever become derogatory to the self-respect of any law-abiding citizen? Similarly, being a devotee of God 
and obeying the laws laid down by him for the ordered functioning of the universe is not derogatory to the self-respect of any individual. On the other hand, he experiences a greater self-respect in this obedience. Dasoham Kosalendraya I am the servant of Kosalendra. I am the servant of Sri Ramachandra. Anuman was so proud of telling that. Proud of being servant. Hanuman has this excellence. When he takes pride of being a servant of Sri Ramachandra, a devotee wedded to high ideals does not fall a prey to temptation and is not led astray. The one who has an unbroken faith in the soul Lord and the ideal of the universe, the very embodiment of precious virtues, alone is competent to express the latent virtues in him. So devotion is a chief instrument of self-expression and development of precious qualities. It stimulates a proper sense of duty by driving away the possible vicious impulses of the mind. For the welfare of the people and the orderly progress of the society, God has laid down some laws and a devoted naturally obeys these laws in all sincerity. An ordinary person leads a disciplined and moral life and keeps himself from sin out of fear of consequences in this world and also in the other. But a devotee leads an ideal life of absolute obedience by an unwavering love of God for its own sake and of his own accord. Swami Shivananda Ji, the direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, said, Know for certain that this world and all living beings are his. Don't have any iota of doubt he is the creator. You are his servants. You are blessed to the extent that he, in his grace, allows you to serve his creatures. It's a great privilege to serve serving attitude is most important to get rid of selfishness. To get rid of the evil effects of ego. Another direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, Swami Ramakrishna Nandaji, he said, almost all men in the world have usurped the throne where God should sit. On that one where God should be, a most worthless slave has been given place. Who is that? It is the ego. When you know this, then drive out the ego. When you do this and become the slave or servant of God instead, you will realize your eternal nature. You can see God. The stumbling block is ego. If we can't love others, if we can't serve others, what are we here for? We need to serve others in order to lift ourselves up out of the state of degradation and selfishness into which we have fallen. 
we should be grateful to the needy for making it possible for us to raise ourselves this is the only real good that comes out of all that we do for others we merely better ourselves swami vivekananda was right when he said let the receiver stand up and permit let the giver kneel down and give thanks that he has been given a chance to unfold himself this is no exaggeration it is literally true for what happens when you do good to another you expand your own heart and grow more unselfish but suppose there were no needy or unfortunate souls what would happen you would become a selfish brute these are the words of vivekananda please note if you do anything to make a man happy no matter what it is be glad of it so master servant attitude shri ramakrishna emphasizes this point very much once shri ramachandra asked hanuman how do you look on me and hanuman replied o oh, shri ram as long as i have the feeling of i ego i see that you are the whole and i am a part you are the master i am your servant but when o oh, shri ram i have the knowledge of truth then i realize that you are i and i am you the relationship of master and servant is the proper one since the i must remain shri ramakrishna says let the rascal be god's servant he calls the ego rascal how true it is we all become mad because of ego because of ego i and mine these constitute ignorance my house my wealth my learning my positions the attitude that prompts one to say such things comes of ignorance on the contrary the attitude born of knowledge is oh god you are the master and all these things belong to you house family children attendants friends they are all yours next point shri ramakrishna says one should constantly remember death is very important that you should know that your life on this earth is not permanent everyone has to go has to quit the body in valmiki ramayan there are profuse verses which deal with this subject it tells all ripe fruits must drop down from the tree even so a man has to wait the inevitable hour of death 
even as a mansion with firm and massive pillars dilapidates so do mortal men decayed and withered by efflux of time fall a prey to ruthless death withered by old age and eventually die a night that flies returns no more even as the waters of the yamuna river flowing into the sea do not roll back from the same death closely follows a man wherever he goes and wherever he sits and returns with him until his journey ends however long may be the distance traveled this are all taken from shrimad valmiki ramayana again the same ramayana tells wrinkles begin to appear all over the body and the hair turn gray man's mortal frame is crumbled by old age what can mortal power avail there is not one who can live as he intends to what power then has he over the death of those for which he grieves as a bystander on a road coming across a batch of travelers says he will also follow them even so do we follow the footsteps of our grand fathers how can a person grieve when he is in the track from which he cannot swerve like a torrent which cannot flow back past life cannot be retraced life should therefore be directed towards happiness as bliss is the heritage of man just as a tidal wave brings together two logs in a boundless ocean and another wave separates them even so wives and children relatives and wealth hold us and separate themselves to meet no more not one can avoid the common lot of all the separation of these is certain at the dawn men are delighted with their acquisitions and at sunset they revel in nocturnal pleasures but they never reflect to see that their life is shortened by each sunrise and sunset men rejoice at the advent of every new season that comes up fresh but few realize their lives decay as the seasons smile just as the sun's rays evaporate quickly all water during summer even so the rolling days and nights steal our moments as they fly why do you lament for others grieve for yourself as every moment of yours is gradually taking away your life whether you remain stationary or move about all accumulated treasures perish every climax has an anti climax all unions end in separation and all life must come to an end it is an old saying that all beings lose their sense when they are near their end of life a courageous and intelligent man shall avoid in all moods and states these various forms of grief lamentations and cries so death is 
approaching us whether we want it or not it grabs us so you must do your all efforts to realize the divine in this life if you wholeheartedly make effort god's grace shows you how to proceed and it inspires you and you will not be afraid of death so constant remember of death means you must develop vairagya this passion so shri ram krishna says one should constantly remember death why are we born then we are born into this world to perform certain duties like the people who come from the countryside to calcutta and business this is our garden this is our lake and so forth but if the superintendent is dismissed for some misdeed he can't carry away even his mango wood chest his sense is secretly by the gatekeeper god laughs on two occasions he laughs when the physician says to the patient's mother oh don't be afraid mother i shall certainly cure your boy god laughs saying to himself i am going to take his life and this man says he will save it the physician thinks he is the master forgetting that god is the master god laughs again when two brothers divide their land with a string saying to each other this side is mine and that side is yours god laughs and says to himself the whole universe belongs to me but they say they own this portion this portion or that portion can one know god through reasoning she ram krishna himself answers that question no be his servant surrender yourself to him and then pray to him then he asks a question to vidyasagar well what's your attitude vidya sagar said smilingly some day i shall confide it to you master said laughingly god cannot be realized through mere scholarly reasoning intoxicated with divine love the master sang who is there that can understand what mother kali is even the six darshanas are powerless to reveal her it is she the scriptures say that is the inner self of the yogi who in self discovers all his joy she that of her own sweet will inhabits every living thing the macrocosm and microcosm rest in the mother's womb now do you see how vast it is in the muladhara the yogi meditates on her and in the sahasrara who but shiva has beheld her as she really is within the lotus wilderness she sports beside her mate the swan shiva the absolute when man aspires to understand her 
Ram Prasad must smile to think of knowing her. He says, he is quite as laughable as to imagine one can swim across the boundless ocean. But while my mind has understood, alas, my heart has not. Though but a dwarf, it still would strive to make a captive of the moon. Continuing, the master said, Did you notice? The macrocosm and microcosm rest in the mother's womb. Now, do you see how vast it is? Again, the poet says, Even the six dashnas are powerless to reveal her. She can be realized by means of mere scholarship. One must have faith and love. If a man has faith in God, then he need not be afraid, though he may have committed sin. Nay, the vilest sin. Then Sri Ramakrishna sang a song glorifying the power of faith. If only I can pass away repeating Durga's name, how can't thou then, O Blessed One, withhold from me deliverance, wretched though I may be? Now the next point Sri Ramakrishna points out how God, how God can be seen. Faith and devotion. Faith and devotion. One realizes God easily through devotion. Tremendous faith that makes easy to see God, to realize the truth. Sri Ramakrishna would teach the aspirants most subtle spiritual ideals, spiritual ideas through most simple and witty stories. Now Sri Ramakrishna tells a story how Faith does work. There was once a Pandit who lived on the bank of a river. So learned was he that other Pandits came from far and near to consult with him. He became so famous. They showered him with appreciation. On the other side of the bank lived a Milkmaid. Her name Lakshmi, who sold milk to the Pandit. Hers was a very busy day. She woke up early in the morning, bathed her cows, milked them, then cooked a meal for her old father, and then set out to deliver the milk. She had to cross the river on a boat. One day, the Pandit was waiting for her for a long time. When she finally arrived, Pandit said, Lakshmi, oh, you have come at last. I was waiting for you since early morning. From tomorrow, I want the milk before sunrise. He's ordering. The next morning, Lakshmi rushed to the river bank at the crack of dawn. But the boatman did not show up until late morning. Without the boatman, how could she cross? Then the boatman came. Then Lakshmi said to him, Hurry, hurry! Knowing that Pandit would be waiting for the milk. Hurry up! Whatever it is, she came late. Then Pandit claimed, You are late again? What happened? The Pandit was in a bad mood that day. He was mad. 
don't give me excuses he shouted how dare you disregard my wishes don't you know who i am lakshmi began to cry poor milkmaid but the pandit continued to boast do you know how learned i am you are just a simple milkmaid i know so many things that river is like the river of life he talks about philosophy now people safely cross the river of life by invoking the name of hari another name for vishnu lakshmi took the pandit's words very seriously because she was very simple minded pure hearted village girl so all good qualities are there and when she went back home she said to herself i wish pandit had told me this earlier anyway next day lakshmi arrived at the pandit's house before sunrise pandit was surprised to see her as he could not see the boatman how did you cross the river astonishingly the pandit asked her lakshmi smiled and said sir you taught me to cross the river by chanting the name of hari and i did that's impossible the pandit shouted and ordered her to cross the river again he wanted to see himself so he came lakshmi easily crosses river again without any difficulty chanting all through the name of hari as she did so she stayed completely dry the pandit tried to do the same chanting the name of hari but as he tried to protect his clothes from getting wet he fell into the river lakshmi was astonished o oh, pandit ji she said you are not thinking of hari at all you are busy thinking about your dhoti that's why it did not work pandit ji marveled at lakshmi's devotion and accepted that her faith was more powerful than his empty learning he sincerely blessed lakshmi so what is needed is simple hearted faith and love god is grasped through the ecstasy of love by singing the master went into samadhi he was seated on the bench facing west the palms of his hands joined together his body erect and motionless everyone watched him expectantly vidyasagar too was speechless and could not take his eyes from the master after time shri ramkrishna showed signs of regaining the normal state he drew a deep breath and said with a smile the means of realizing god or ecstasy of love and devotion that is one must love god he who is brahman is addressed as a mother he it is says ramprasad that i approach as mother but must i give away the secret here in the marketplace from the hints i have given o mind guess what that being is ram prasad asks the mind only to guess the nature of god he wishes it to understand that what is called brahman in the vedas is addressed by him as a mother he who is attributeless also has attributes he who is brahman is also shakti when thought of as inactive he is called brahman and when thought of as creator preserver and destroyer he is called the primordial energy kali brahman and shakti are identical like fire and its power to burn 
when we talk of fire we automatically mean also its power to burn again the fire's power to burn implies the fire itself if you accept the one you must accept the other brahman alone is addressed as the mother this is because a mother is an object of great love one is able to realize god just through love ecstasy of feeling devotion love and faith these are the means listen to a song as is a man's meditation so is his feeling of love as is a man's feeling of love so is his gain and faith is the root of all if in the nectar lake of mother kali's feet my mind remains immersed of little use or worship oblations or sacrifice what is needed is absorption in god loving him intensely the nectar lake is a lake of immortality a man sinking in in it doesn't die but becomes immortal some people believe that by thinking of god too much the mind becomes deranged but that is not true god is a lake of nectar the ocean of immortality he is called the immortal in the vedas sinking in it one does not die but verily transcends death of little use or worship oblations or sacrifice if a man comes to love god he need not trouble himself much about these activities one needs a fan only as long as there is no breeze the fan may be laid aside if the southern breeze blows then what need is there of a fan so let us follow these teachings of shri ramakrishna ways and means of seeing god as shri ramakrishna has assured god can be seen narendra said some people get angry with me when i speak of renunciation master said in a whisper renunciation is necessary point him to his different limbs if one thing is placed upon another you must remove the one to get the other can you get the second thing without removing the first narendra said true sir master said to narendra in a whisper when one sees everything filled with god alone does one see anything else narendra asked sir must one renounce the world master said didn't i say just now when one sees everything filled with god alone does one see anything else does one then see any such thing as a world i mean mental renunciation not one of those who have come here is a worldly person some of them had a slight desire for instance a fancy for woman rakhal and em smile and that desire has been fulfilled the master looks at narendra tenderly and becomes filled with love looking at the devotees he says grand with a smile narendra asks the master what is grand master said smilingly i see that preparations are going on for a grand renunciation narendra and the devotees look silently at the master rakhal resumes the conversation he said smilingly to the master narendra is now beginning to understand you he is beginning to understand you rather well Sri Ramakrishna laughs and says, Yes, that is so. I see that many others too are beginning to understand. To Yam, he said, Isn't that so? Yam said, Yes, sir. Sri Ramakrishna turns his eyes to Narendra and Yam and by a sign of his finger draws the attention of the devotees to them. He first points out to Narendra and then Yam. Rakhal understands. the master's hint and says to him with a smile 
don't you mean don't you mean that narendra has the attitude of a hero and he meaning m that of a handmaid of god she laughed and laughs narendra smilingly said to rakal he meaning m doesn't talk much and is bashful is it why you say he is a handmaid of god master said smilingly to narendra well what do you think of me narendra said you are a hero a handmaid of god and everything else these words fill shri ramakrishna with divine emotion he places his hand on his heart and is about to say something he says to narendra and the other devotees i see that all things everything that exists have come from this he asks narendra by a sign what did you understand narendra answered all created objects have come from you the master don't say him his mind is full of renunciation he sinks unsteady is water on the lotus petal just as unsteady is the life of man one moment with a sadhu is a boat that takes one across the ocean of this world narendra has hardly finished one or two lines when shri ramakrishna says to him by a sign what are you singing that's a very significant attitude a very common place thing we shall stop here do you have any questions <laughs> all right chant the name of the lord and his glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire worldly lust raging furiously within o name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thyself o self drowned deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree take no honor to thyself give honor to all chant unceasingly the name of the lord o lord and soul of the universe mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue the playthings of lust or the ties of fame as many times as i may be reborn grant me o lord a steadfast love for thee a drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant o sweet one and thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet oh how i long for the day when an instant separation from the old lord will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with his desire and the world without thee is a heartless void prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who still as the hearts of thy devotees do with me what thou wilt for thou art my heart's beloved thou and thou alone O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers. May all realize what is good. May all be actuated by noble thoughts. May all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy. May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous reign tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good bread all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour in in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the destroyer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied